Welcome back for the sixth part of this series on creating a NetCat clone in Rust. This time we're going to focus on UDP. Everything we've done up to this point has been TCP, which is quite a different protocol to UDP. The big difference that we're going to care about is that UDP is connectionless. So although a network connection does get established, we can send data whenever we want, and we don't have any of the control, stu control structures or the send-receive semantics that we have with TCP. So let's get into it. So let's grab our UDP socket type from Tokyo. And the first thing we'll notice is that the connect method, the first parameter to it is a self. So you can only call connect on a socket that you've created. You can't create a socket by calling connect. So what we actually need to do is call bind. And that takes an address. So we'll build an address to connect to. And we're going to listen on 0.0.0.0. .0, 0 .0. That means we're going to accept connections from anywhere. And we'll bind to the listen port. Pass that into the bind. And we'll wait for that to establish. And we'll map the error out. So that gives us our connection. We need to that error go and that's our socket but what we were trying to do here was to connect so that's our bind so any traffic that's being sent to us that's where we'll listen for it but we've now got a socket can socket object created and we can connect it to the host that we were trying to connect to socket connect and we'll want an address for that as well so we'll format in place here And that will be going to format in the host, format in the port. And again, we'll await, map the error. Fail to connect. So that's the simple part done. We've got our socket. It's listening for traffic arriving on one port. And it's sending traffic to a remote host and port. Now, what we'd like to be able to do is split this socket and send and receive on it, like we did before with the TCP connection. We can't do that. It doesn't have that interface. So let's remind ourselves of what we were doing, and then we'll start to understand what we need to build to make this work in a slightly more manual fashion. So let's jump over to the read-write function. The interface that the TCP connection gave us allowed us to split up into a reader and a writer part. So that meant that we could launch these two independent Tokyo jobs, one that was doing the read off the socket and one that was doing the write to it. And that meant that we could have that socket used in two different ways at once. With the UDP socket, we haven't got that way of splitting it. We need to be able to read and write from it in a coordinated way that only does one operation at a time. So things are going to look a little different, but we still want to achieve this same idea. We still want to be reading data from the connection, writing it to standard out, and then reading from standard in and writing out to the connection. And the select will still be a useful tool to get these things running at the same time. So let's jump back and see what's needed to build this. What we want to do is approximate our read write by having either a read from standard in or a read from the network. And then after one of those succeeds, we'll do a write to the relevant place. And then we want to keep doing that. So at the top level, we need a loop. And then inside the loop, we're going to do our select to run one or the other of read from standard in and read from the network. So we'll read from standard in first. And to do that, we'll need a buffer. So let's declare a buffer for that. Standard in buffer is an array, all filled with zeros of size 256. And we'll pass that to standard in when we read. If that succeeds, then we'll do our write to the network. Let's set up the network read first, though. So we'll do a socket.receive. And again, we'll need a buffer for that. Network in buffer is 0 and size 256. And there we do our write to standard out. That's the simpler one. So let's go ahead and do that standard out dot write 
and we'll pass the part of the buffer that was red. So grab the buffer and to know how much of it was red we're going to have to assign a variable on here. So we'll just call that response from the socket receive and then we'll destructure that so that will be a an IO result of u size. So how many bytes were read or possibly an error. So if let OK of res, oh, sorry, of amount equal to res. So if res is the OK variant of the result enum, then we'll write those bytes, so zero through amount, and we'll await that, let it finish, and then map out the error if it goes wrong. to write to stand it out and unwrap that. Otherwise, if we didn't manage to get a good result back from the receive, then we will just unwrap the error. So that must be an error then, so that we see it. And then we want to do something similar. We want to write to the network when we read from standard in. So we'll do a similar job here. We want to capture how much was read from standard in, if let OK res amount equals res. Then we can do a socket.send with the standard in buffer. Zero through amount. Select out the part of it that was written to. Dot await and then map error. Failed to write to the socket. And again we'll unwrap and then handle the error case. Res.unwrap. So this is a good start. This gives us the ability to read and write on and off the network. To find out how we're doing, let's build this with cargo build. And we've got two errors. So there's some warnings in here, but let's have a look at the errors. So the first one is that write is not found on Tokyo IO standard out. That should just be an import. So it knows about the function, but it's not imported to be used. And then another error saying that standard in is freed during use. So we've created a reference to standard in here. We've called read on it, but then this thing can exit if the other case in the select runs first. So we should extract this reference to standard in so we can just keep hold of it while we're working. So let's jump back and sort that out. To make the write function available on standard out, we need to import async read and async write from Tokyo. That will sort that error out. And then for standard in, we want to just extract that so that we're not getting a temporary reference back from that function call and just assign it to a variable. So we'll call that standard in is equal to the standard in function, which will hide the standard in import anyway, so we can't make a mistake, and then just use it there. So that should build now. Let's check that. Now that we've fixed those errors, this should build. Let's just make sure that it does before we move on. Good. Okay. So we're able to compile it. Doesn't mean it'll necessarily work, but that is usually the case with Rust. So before we add any more to that, we think that's about right. It should work. So let's jump over and build the serve side of this UDB connection. And then we can come back and adjust the connect to add a bit more to it later. It's fair to assume that the serve function is going to do similar work to what the connect function did. It's still going to do these reads and writes, and it's still going to need a socket. So let's start by copying what we already have for the connect function and adjusting it. Seems like a reasonable assumption because it's going to have some similarities. So the first thing to change is that we really are going to bind here rather than binding to wait for return traffic. So we can set up a bind onto the bind host that we've been passed. And this time we only have the one port. And that's where our first difference comes in. So we're no longer going to be able to set up the inbound and outbound connections in one go because we don't know where to connect to. So with TCP, when we receive a connection on a listener, we know who the other side of the connection is and we can respond straight to it. That's not necessarily the way that UDP connections are used. So we don't immediately know who's connected or who to connect to. So we can't set up this connection here. What we can do instead, and I'm just gonna swap these around because I think it makes more sense if these are in the right order for how we're gonna use them. Rather than doing a network receive, we can do a receive from. And that tells us not only the data that was received, 
but it also tells us who connected. So it gives us this U size of how much data was read into our buffer, and also the socket address of the remote connection. So we can now add that information in here. So we'll destructure that tuple, and we get an address of the remote person connecting to us. Call that remote address. So let's keep track of whether we're connected or not, because we only want to connect back to them once. It's connected as false to start with. So if we're not connected yet, we then want to connect our socket to that remote. So we'll do a socket.connect to the remote address. We'll await that succeeding and unwrap if it doesn't. And then we'll set the is connected equals true. Good. So now when we receive our first packet of data, we will know who connected. We will try and connect to that address that they connected from. And when we then try and do sends, that data will get sent back to the network, to that person who connected. So it's a little bit similar to what we're doing in the TCP case, but a slightly different way of going about it. So we need to adjust the other side of this as well. So there's no point trying to send back to the network until we're connected. That will just produce an error. So if we're not connected, or rather if we are connected, then we can send. So there are some edge cases to worry about here. But initially, this gives us the logic we want. This is the, the core functionality. So let's give that a go and see how it behaves. To test this, I've set up two Docker containers on the same network. So if we have a look at their network configuration with the IP adra command, if we have a look at the ETH0 network interface, this one is running on 172.19.02 as its IP address. And then if we have a look at the same information on the other Docker container, it's running on 172.19.03, where the other one was two. So two separate machines gives us a nice environment that we can test in. So on the first one, we're going to set up the server. And we're going to serve on our own IP address on 23.23 as a port. So inbound connections to our machine, we're listening for them on 23.23. And then we'll set up the client connection to connect to that same IP address, 172.19.02, on port 2323. And we'll set up the listen port, so the port that we want that machine to connect back to us on, as four fives. So let's start that up. So it's saying that it's got an open connection. And that one is still saying nothing. We've not sent anything yet. And it doesn't log when we receive connections yet. So let's send some data over. And that's arriving. Excellent. And let's send back a hello from the server. And that's being sent back. So when we receive that first connection, that logic that we put in to connect back to the remote address and send data over it has worked. So that's excellent. Let's jump back in and handle some side cases. So the few things that I'll have to deal with, if we get a zero size read from standard in, we should terminate the program. So if standard in's been disconnected, whatever the program that was feeding us with data or the terminal has closed that, we should exit. We should also worry about what happens in this is connected. There's no else branch attached to this. So if we've read something from standard in, but nothing remote is connected to us yet, what should happen to that data? Because at the moment it's just being dropped. So we've read that data into the buffer, we'll loop without writing it anywhere, and that buffer will get overwritten. So we should deal with that. So let's start with the connect function. So if we get a an empty read, we want to shut down. So let's let this loop have a condition that'll let it shut down. So mutable active equals true. And while active is true, we want to keep running. So while active, and then we'll check that here. So if amount not equal to zero, we'll do a network send, and otherwise we will set active to false. That deals with that. And then let's do the same thing for the serve. And then while active, and if we get an empty read after we're connected or before, doesn't really matter. So if 
amount not equal to zero, then we'll do the logic that we want to do when we've got a valid read and standard install open. Otherwise, we will terminate the loop. So set active equals to false. That takes care of that. Then the slightly more difficult problem of what do we do if we're receiving data, but the network isn't connected yet. Our kind of response socket isn't bound yet. So the most sensible thing we can do is to keep hold of that. That's the most likely to match the user's expectations. So let's declare a buffer to hold it in. And if we see anything, so if we're not connected yet, then we will write to that buffer. And we will pass in the same thing we would have written to standard out or to the network even. So rather than doing a push, which takes one element, we're just going to hand over the entire slice and let that be written to the buffer. And then when we first get a connection, anything that's in that buffer, we need to send to the network. So let's check that. So if the buffer is not empty, so we'll just check its length is not equal to zero. Then we want to write all of that data to the network. So we'll grab our send command up to here. And we don't want to use the buffer we just read. We want to use the old one. So we'll use buff dot as ref. So that'll give us back a slice that we can pass to the send method. And then we want to clear that out so that the next time we receive something, we don't try and send this same data again. So we'll just do buff dot clear and that will empty it out. So that takes care of that problem of data that's received before the connection is made. So let's test that and see that that's working. I've just spotted and fixed a minor bug in that previous bit of coding. The UDP serve function should have had its active variable initialized to true, not to false. Slight logic error there. So now let's test this. We want to check that any data that has been buffered up on the server is ready to send and get sent when a client connects to us. So we'll start up our server and we'll push out some data. So we'll call it waiting to send and then we'll connect to that server. And we'll send hello from the client, which got sent through, but nothing happened without waiting to send yet. That didn't get sent back. And that's just because we've put that in the, not in the connection code, as soon as we receive a connection, we've put it in the code that reads from standard in. So until we send something from standard in, that won't get sent back. So maybe we could improve that. But for now, let's just check it works. So we'll send something else. And both the waiting to send and the something else got pushed back to the client. So that buffering is working. We can make it a little bit faster, a bit more responsive, but it is working. So that is it. That is UDP implemented for Netcat, or for RCAT rather. So UDP is great for really low latency things. Things like video games might use it for real-time data or voice over IP will use it to get low latency so that you get to hear people's voices right as they're talking, not with delays and error checking and all this kind of stuff that TCP does. So I hope you enjoyed this and go try and build something with UDP and best of luck.